In the age of information, we have access to an overwhelming amount of research. But not all studies are created equal, and not all evidence carries the same weight. This can lead to confusion when people cite conflicting studies to support their arguments. It can even lead to the misconception that science is unreliable, or worse, that you can find a study to support any claim. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Giordano Scarciotti, and today we are diving into a topic that's crucial for anyone interested in understanding science. Whether you're a student, a professional, or just someone who loves learning about how the world works, we're talking about the hierarchy of evidence in scientific research. Imagine a debate where two people are arguing about the benefits of a particular diet. Person A cites a study that claims that the diet is incredibly beneficial, while person B cites another study that suggests that the diet may be harmful. How do we make sense of this? Is science unreliable? Is this a paradox? Of course, the problem here isn't that science is unreliable. Rather, is that not all studies are of the same quality or provide the same level of evidence. To understand why one study might be more reliable than another, we can use a tool called the hierarchy of evidence, a concept that helps us rank the reliability of different types of research. The hierarchy of evidence is often represented as a pyramid. At the base, we have the weakest form of evidence, and as we move up, the evidence becomes stronger and more reliable. Let's break this down. At the bottom of the pyramid, we have expert opinions and anecdotal evidence. While expert opinions can provide valuable insights and are often used for instance in trials, they are still based on personal experience and are subject to biases. Anecdotal evidence, such as individual stories or testimonials, is even less reliable because it's not based on systematic research. Next up are case reports or case series, which describe observation from a single patient or a small group of patients. This can be useful for identifying new trends or phenomena, but they lack the statistical power of more broad generalizations. Next, we have cross-sectional studies. They examine data at a single point in time, often through surveys or questionnaire. While they can identify correlations, they can't establish causality meaning they can't tell us what causes what. Next on the pyramid, we have case control studies. They compare individuals with a particular condition, call it cases, to those without it, call it controls, to identify factors that might contribute to the condition. These studies can suggest association, but they can't prove cause and effect because they lack a temporal variable. Next, we have core studies. They follow a group of people over time to see how certain factors influence outcomes. These are more powerful than case control studies because they can help establish a timeline. And in this way, they can suggest that one event may lead to another. Near the top of the pyramid, we have randomized controlled trials, RCTs. RCTs are considered the gold standard for testing interventions because participants are randomly assigned to different groups, reducing the risk of bias. This allows researchers to make stronger inferences about cause and effect. Finally, at the very top of the pyramid, we have systematic reviews and meta-analysis. The difference between systematic reviews and meta-analysis in this video is not really important, but the point is that these are studies that pull data from multiple RCTs or other high-quality studies to draw more robust conclusions. Because they synthesize a large body of evidence, they are considered the most reliable form of scientific evidence. But why is the evidence at the top of the pyramid considered more reliable? The answer lies in how these studies are designed. Lower level of evidence, like expert opinions or case studies, are more susceptible to bias. They may be influenced by the author's personal experiences, the specific circumstances of the case, or even the way data is collected. These studies also tend to involve smaller sample sizes, making it harder to generalize the findings to a larger population. In contrast, a higher level of evidence, like RCTs, are designed to minimize bias. By randomly assigning participants to different groups, researchers can control for confounding variables. This allows them to isolate the effect of the intervention they are studying. And when we reach the level of systematic reviews and meta-analysis, we're not just looking at one study, we're looking at the collection of studies. 
This broader perspective helps sharpen our understanding, reducing the influence of outliers or studies with flawed methodologies. Now, while the hierarchy of evidence is often discussed in the context of medical research, the concept applies to many other fields as well. Let's take a look at some examples outside of medicine. In climate science, for instance, a single study may suggest a particular trend, but a meta-analysis that aggregates data from dozens of studies provides a much stronger basis for understanding larger phenomena such as climate change. Similarly, in psychology, systematic reviews help identify which therapies are most effective across different populations and settings. These systematic reviews are invaluable because they allow us to see patterns that might not be apparent in individual studies. They reduce the influence of any single study, they might have methodological flaws or unique circumstances that don't apply more broadly. So why does all this matter? Because when we understand the hierarchy of evidence, we become better consumers of information. We can critically evaluate the studies we encounter and make more informed decisions. Misunderstanding the hierarchy of evidence can lead to significant problems. It can cause people to believe in false or misleading claims, simply because they have encountered a study that supports what they already believe. This can be particularly harmful when it comes to public health, policy making or personal decisions that affect our well-being. When people give too much weight to low-level evidence, they may reject well-established scientific consensus, leading to decisions that could have a serious consequence. So how can you apply this knowledge when you are reading a research or are hearing about a new study? Here are some practical tips. First of all, check the source. When you read a study, check where it falls in the hierarchy of evidence. Is it an expert opinion, a case report, or a systematic review? Second, check for peer review. Has the study been peer reviewed? Peer reviewed studies have undergone scrutiny by other experts in the field, which adds another level of reliability. Third, look for systematic reviews. Whenever possible, seek out systematic reviews or meta analysis as these studies provide a more comprehensive view of the evidence. Fourth, look for consensus. If multiple studies or reviews point to the same conclusion, that's a good sign that the evidence is strong. Be wary of single studies that go against the grain, especially if they haven't been corroborated by other research. Fifth, always be skeptical of sensational claims. Studies that make bold sensational claims are often based on weaker evidence. High quality research usually presents its findings in a measured and cautious way. Finally, keep staying informed. Science is always evolving and new studies are published all the time. Staying informed means keeping up with the latest higher quality research and not just relying on the same single study. Remember, science is a tool for understanding the world, but it's up to us to use that tool wisely. By understanding the hierarchy of evidence, we can make better decisions, whether in our personal lives, our professions, or our contributions to society. To sum up, the hierarchy of evidence helps us understand that not all research is created equal. At the top of the pyramid, systematic reviews and meta-analysis provide the most reliable evidence, while lower levels of evidence are more prone to bias and should be interpreted with caution. Next time you're faced with conflicting research or debating a hot topic, think where the evidence comes from and how reliable it is. Science isn't about finding a study to support your own point of view. It's about finding the best evidence available to understand the truth. Thanks for watching. If you learned something new today, be sure to like, share and subscribe. And if you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Keep learning, stay critical and stay curious.